Hi and welcome. In this tutorial I want to show you a technique for creating cartoon caricature sort of images out of any of your pictures. Now we're going to start with these two images and we're going to create this effect you can see here. Now if you want to work along both these start images are available to download from pixabay.com now don't forget to help you, I have created a full printed tutorial sheet that you can download by clicking on the blue download button underneath the video on my website. So let's get started. My name's Ken Fisher and this is Live Link Training. Step 1. In step 1 we're going to create a composite image. Now we're starting off here in Bridge and, and I've got two images that I want to use and it's this background.jpg and the soldier.png. So let's open them in Photoshop. So I've already clicked on the background image. I'm going to hold the control or the command key down if you're on a Mac and click on the soldier image. And then I'm just going to right click on one of these and use the contextual menu open. And that's going to open these both into Photoshop for me. So you can see here now I've got my background image and I've got my soldier image. And now I'm going to put these together. And what I want to do is to get my soldier image into my background image. Okay, well how can we do that? Well we can use the move tool. And I can access the move tool by just clicking on the move tool at the top of the tools panel. Or I can press the V key on the keyboard. I'm now going to click and I'm going to drag my soldier, just pause a second and then drag it back and drop him into place. OK, I'll just drag him, move him up a little bit and put him just there. Now he's probably a bit big, so I'm going to transform him. I'm going to make him a little bit smaller. So I'm going to do Control and T or Command and T if you're on a Mac. Now, if you're on older versions of Photoshop there, to do this to transform in proportion, you'll have to hold the shift key down. In the newer versions of CC, it comes as standard. So I'm just going to click a corner handle and drag him down in proportion to something like that, just a little bit smaller. And then I'll double click to it inside the transform or I can go up and I can click on the tick to commit the transform. And there we have now, if you look in the layers panel, we've got two layers. Um, and this is now like a composite image. Well, I'd need this to be a, a flattened image. So I'm going to go to the panel flyout menu. I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to go down to flatten image. So we've now got our soldier here integrated into our background. Now I know the lighting's different, but that won't matter because of the effects that we're going to be using on it. Step two, we're going to convert this image to a smart object. Now I want to work non-destructively, so I'm going to have to convert it to a smart object. And you do that quite easily if you go along to the layer, actually in the layers panel, and somewhere between the end of the what the name is and the padlock, if we right click, we can select convert to smart object from the contextual menu. And there it is, that's all there is to it. And we're now, you can see that we've got a smart object because you've got this little icon here that tells you that this is now a smart object. Step three, I'm going to duplicate and then rename the layer. Now I can do this with a keyboard shortcut, which is my favourite. So for duplicating the layer, I'm going to use Ctrl and J or Command and J if you're on a Mac. And that's going to duplicate the layer. And then I'm going to rename this layer to Lines. I'm going to do that by just double clicking where the name is. It'll open up a little dialog box for you and you can type in a new name. And then I'm just going to click anywhere else just for it to accept that name. So we've now got a smart object and then a duplicate of the smart object, which is called Lines. Step four. I'm going to apply the Poster Edges filter to the Lines layer. So I need to make sure that my Lines layer is active just by clicking on it. And then I'm going to go up to the Filter menu and down to Filter Gallery. And in the Filter Gallery, I'll need to be in the Artistic section. So if this is not open or another one's open, click 
to open the artistic section and then we're going down and we're going to click on poster edges now this is the filter but this is the the three things that we can change about the filter um, edge thickness edge intensity and posterization now basically if you go right down to zero then the edges will disappear off a lot of the um, like particles and lines if you go right up to the top then you'll get some really really crunchy and well-defined edges I think I'll leave this at something like two I think that looks okay and the edge intensity well it's it's how black are these edges that you're getting so if I drop that down to zero you'll see that most of the edges will disappear If I put it right up to 10 again we'll get really really deep and black edges and again I think I'm going to leave this at I don't know what say three something like three and then posterization this is basically how many colors do you want to display so again if I take this down to zero we've not got many colors at all and if we take it right up to the top you'll see that it's more or less it's near on what the image is we've got quite a lot of colors displayed but I think I'd like to reduce the colors to make this comic book effect so I'm going to drop this down to about two and I just want to make the point here that these settings are image size dependent so if your image is a different size to the one I'm using then you will have to experiment with these and either make them larger or smaller to get the same type of effect okay when I'm done I'm just gonna click OK step 5 we're going to add the threshold adjustment now the threshold adjustment will give like a line art look so any pixel with a brightness value of 120 or above will come out black any pixel with a brightness value under 128 will come out white so it will give you a, a really stark look to it and a, and a line drawing effect if you like which is what we're looking for so I'm gonna go to image and adjustments and down to threshold and you'll see exactly what I mean now all we've got is black or white now we've got 128 which is the the center point between 0 and 256 and now if I take it to the left you'll see it'll go white or you'll get more white in the area and if I take it to the right it'll go completely black when I get to that end so it's a case of just finding somewhere that you think works as more or less a little bit of a pencil sketchy look and I'm going to leave it yeah, I think around there about 60 I think does a pretty good job we've got a, a bit of a balance yeah I'm okay with that and so when I'm finished I'm gonna click OK now the great thing about these smart objects is that these filters are now bolted onto the outside of the smart object so if I've got something wrong I can say oh well that thresholds a bit much so I can double click on where it says threshold and I can go back in and it's totally adjustable so I'll just drop that back a little bit to there and then say okay we're cooking with gas now so let's hit step six and for this we're going to add the oil paint filter to smooth out the effect a little bit because it is a little bit grungy it is a little bit gritty and I'd like it to be a little bit smoother so where's the oil paint filter well now if we go to filter and stylize we can find the oil paint filter and I'm going to click on it and get up the oil paint filter dialog and you'll see already what it's done it's actually smoothed out a lot of these grungy parts and, and I think it looks really cool but it's a little bit over the top so let's have a look at some of the the settings we can change we've got stylization and, and this either gives a dabbed look to the paint so it looks like it's been splodged on with a brush or if you put it right over to 10 it really gives a like a well a wishy-washy look really I'm not keen on that too much so again this is down to you it's a case of just getting it to a place where you think it looks good and it leaves you like a nice looking like these are, are, are like soft edge clothes and things like that it, it looks pretty good now cleanliness this affects how long the strokes are of the paint so if you take it down to zero you'll see you'll not get 
any strokes at all. If you take it right up to 10, again, it'll really soften it and, and blow the heck out of it, which is not what we need. So again, we just look at finding something that is where we think it needs to be. So I think stylization will stick to about 4.3. And cleanliness, we'll leave at 3.9, I think. Now, scale isn't going to make much difference here. So if I take scale down to zero and then up right up to 10. So it's really, I'm going to leave scale. We'll say it's something like 4.2. And then bristle detail. Well, we're not using bristle brushes, so really there's not much. We're not going to get anything out of that, really. So I'll just leave that at, say, 2.9, which is the figures that I've got in the tutorial. And then lighting, I'm going to leave that off because if I put the lighting on, it'll start look, looking at different directions and pulling out all the detail that's in the sky, which I don't want. So I'm going to leave that switched off. So once I've finished with that, you can see I'll just turn it on and off. We've got that's where we started. And now we've got a nice smooth texture to things. And I like that much better. And now I'm going to click OK. And now you can see we've got all these filters and adjustments building up all bolted to the lines layer. We've got an oil paint filter, a threshold filter and a filter gallery, all of which we can go in and re-edit. Step seven. Now, when we look at this, we've got a lot of white and we've got some, the, the lines are actually in black, which is fine for a pencil sketch, exactly what we want. But I don't want all this white. So I'm going to now use a blend mode to drop out all the whites. And my blend mode of choice for this <clears throat> is multiply. So I'm going to go up to where it says normal here in the layers panel. And I'm going to click and I'm going to select multiply. You can see now that we're left with the lines, the line art, but now we haven't got any of the whiting. So it's getting to look a little bit more cartoony now. But don't forget, we can always go back and change any of these parameters later on. Okie dokie, step eight. Now I'd like to create a color layer because I'd like to be able to manipulate the color separate to the line art. Now to do that, I need to create a duplicate of the original layer. So I'm going to go down to layer note and I'm going to click on it to activate it. Then I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to duplicate it with my favorite keyboard shortcut of Control and J or Command and J if you're on a Mac. And then I'll rename this one Color. Okay, job done. Now, so I can see what's going on correctly on the color layer, I'm just going to turn off the visibility of the lines layer just for a minute. And that will give me a, a, an original preview of, of what I'm dealing with. Right, and now I'm going to add the poster edges filter, but this time to the color layer. So I'm going to go to the filter menu and I'm going to go down to filter gallery. And I'll select again poster edges. But this time I'll make some changes. Now the edge thickness, and this is how, how black or these uh, edges are, I'm going to take right down to zero. And then the edge intensity, again, I'm going to take that down to zero. And that should just leave me with the color. I'll leave posterization at two. Well, I don't want to put it up a bit. Let's try it at three, if it's any better. No, I'm going to leave it at 2. I quite like it at 2. And then I'm going to click OK. Step 10, we're going to add the oil paint filter to the color layer. And again, we can probably use the same settings as before. So this time we'll go to filter and stylize and oil paint. And we'll probably leave it the same. I think that's looking good. And then we'll click OK. Now step 11, we're going to combine everything because here we've got the layer with the, the line art on and here we've got the layer with the color on. So now I'm going to turn on the lines layer and make a combination of the two. 
Hmm. No, I don't think that's looking bad. Now, step 12. I'd like to be able to boost the colour and change the contrast on, on the whole image, if that's what I need to do. So, what I want to do is put some adjustment layers at the top of the stack. So, I'm going to go up to my lines layer and I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to go down to my adjustment layers, which is this little black and white icon at the bottom of the layers panel. And let's have a levels adjustment layer. And then we'll have another one, but this time we'll have a vibrance adjustment layer. And these two allow us to do some corrections. So I'll, let's have a look at the levels adjustment layer first. So I'm going to click on the adjustments itself, which is here. And then let's see if we can play around. We'll just lighten it up a little bit with the mid-tones. And we'll boost the colours a little bit with the vibrance adjustment layer. Just make it... I can make it a little look the color better or really take the color out but I'll just try a little bit of vibrance and a little bit of saturation now I think that looks pretty cool step 13 we're going to create a group to try and tidy up the layer stack a little bit now we don't need this properties panel open so I can get rid of that and what I'm going to do is is select all the layers except the bottom layer which is our original image. So I'm going to click on the first one, which is the vibrance layer. And then I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to click on the color layer. And this is going to select me all these layers. And then I'm even going to use the keyboard shortcut of Control or Command and G, if you're on a Mac, to make a group. And then I'll rename this group Effect. Now that everything is in this group, what I can do is I can show the original and then quickly show the final result. So if I turn off the visibility of the effect layer, I turn off the visibility of all those effects that's in there. So if I turn that off, this is my original layer that I started with. And this is my comic book or my cartoony sort of look to it. Yeah, I think we're going in a good direction with this. Step 40. <clears throat> what I'd like to do is... is lighten up the underneath of the helicopter a little bit. All the effects we've put on have created quite a dark area under the helicopter and I'd just like to lighten it. But this original image in this composition we've only got one image and it's in a smart object which is here and everything else is referenced to it. So if I want to change something on the original image I've got to open the smart object. I can do that by double clicking on the thumbnail. So if I double click on the thumbnail of layer 0, what you'll see open up is, as well as the Cartoon Soldiers PSD, which is my original file that's got all the layers in, I've now opened up the Smart Object, and this is now a PSB file. This is the Smart Object, or what's inside the Smart Object, and this is the original image that I put in. And you can see it's a background image with a padlock on. Now what I need to do is to just lighten up these little bits that I think need lightening, which is this shadow area and this little bit on the front. And I can do that with any selection tool. So I'll pick the lasso tool for this. Or I can press L on the keyboard. And then I'm just going to go around where all these dark areas are. And I'll try and pick this shadow up around something like that area. And then what I'll do is I'll add an adjustment layer and I'm doing this now inside the smart object. So I'm going to add, let's say, a levels adjustment layer. I'll just move that out of the way. And then I'll use my mid-tone slider to just lighten up that area a little bit. Don't have to do it a lot, just a little bit to counteract, if you like, the darkening effect that all the filters are having. And you can see that it's already created a mask for me based on the, uh, the selection I had. And I've lightened it a little bit. But now I'd like to see, I'd like to soften the transition a little bit because you can see it is quite harsh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the mask. And that's going to show me in the properties panel, the mask properties. And one of those sliders here is called the feather slider. And so if I pull that across, what I'll do is I'll soften out the edge of that transition. So when I get to about there, 
I think it looks not bad. Yeah, that's nice and soft. All them edges around there, it tends to blend in a little bit better. Okay. Now, if we go back and look at the cartoon soldier layer here, well, I'll just get rid of the properties panel. I don't need that for the minute. You'll see nothing's changed. This is now referencing the original file. And the original file is in here, but this adjustment that I've made at the moment is just in the computer. It hasn't been saved to the hard drive yet. So that's what I need to do next, which is updating the smart object. And I do that by saving, not save as. I'm going to do a file and a save. And what this will do is now save that to disk and it will also update all the smart object instances of that, which if I now go to my cartoon soldier PSD, you'll see that it's now lightened up all that area for me around here. So anything that I need to lighten on here, then all I've got to do is go into the smart object and we'll get this PSB file come up, which is the original file. Anything I alter on there, I can just play file and save and it will update everything that's in this file because it updates the smart object and everything else, all these layers in here, are all referenced to that one image. Okay, step 15. What we can do now is bring in another image. And if we place it inside the smart object, we can get it to be re-referenced and add all these effects to it, but for that particular image. So I've got another image open here. So we've got Amelia.jpg and I'd like to see what she would look like with all those edits on. But I don't want to go through it all again. So what I'm going to try and do is if we go back to the cartoon soldier, we can see that this is referencing this particular file here. And this is in the PSB file. So what I'm going to do, I, I, I don't need these to be different now. So I'm going to flatten these down. So I'm going to fly out menu and go down to merge down. So I've now got a, a new background layer. I'm now going to go to my Amelia.jpg. I'm going to select my move tool, which you can do by pressing the V key or just clicking on the move tool in the toolbox. And I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it into my PSB file, which is my smart object file. And then drag it back and let it go. And I'll just move it a little bit. So I've now got the second image. And what I need to do, I'll just switch off the first image. So I'm going to switch off. Now it's just a little bit off. So let's just tab it over just a little bit. There we go. So I've now switched off the background layer. But again, this hasn't been saved to disk. So if I look at my soldier, it's just the same as it was before. But what I can do now is go back to my PSB file and save it to update the smart object. So file and save. It will update that smart object file. And then if I go back to my cartoon soldier, you'll see that I'll have now the effect that's added to, the, to that image. Ooh, no, I think that's quite cool, actually. But I may just want to make some adjustments. So I'll, I'll open up the global levels adjustment, which is at the top. And I'll just lighten it up a little bit. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'll go to my vibrance layer and try and pull the saturation a little bit. Yeah, I'm liking that. And a little bit of vibrance. Let's try again on... No, that's taking it a bit too far. Okay. So, I'd like to work on a hair a little bit. So, let's see if we can do that. So, I'm going to... I'll just close all this up. So again, this is in the PSB file. So I need to double click on the smart object layer to open it up. And this gives me the image that I've put in. And again, just like we did with the helicopter, I'm going to get my lasso tool. 
and I'm going to start here and just go around the hair because it's quite dark around this area something like that and we'll go around this area of hair as well and something like that okay and then again like we did before I'm going to do a levels adjustment layer inside the smart object now and again I'll just play with the, the mid-tone slider and just lighten up all the hair a little bit that's looking quite good and again we'll soften it so double click on the mask to bring up the masks properties and we'll pull the feather slider a little bit just to soften that transition a little bit okay when I've done that all I've got to do is update the the layer on the PSB file so let's have a quick look at the cartoon soldier so here we've got quite dark areas of hair if we click back on the PSB file and update it so we'll go file and save we'll wait for it to update and now when we go back to our cartoon soldier layer you can see that we've lightened all the hair up and I think that looks pretty good let's get rid of the properties panel just to have a look at it yeah yeah I like where we've gone with that well that's it for smart objects I think they are really smart allowing you to reference one image in several different layers now I've got a template which I can add a totally different image to and then go back in all the filters so I can go back to the effect and I could change all these filters to customize it for this particular image okay I hope you found that useful if you did please share it with a friend and don't forget there's a full printed tutorial sheet you can download just click the blue download button underneath the video on my website I'll see you in the very next video bye for now